What's up guys, welcome back uh, to the channel. If you're new here, like and subscribe. Um, I'm gonna be trying to put out a lot more Mustang content. Um, I've got a couple mods in mind. But anyways, today we're just gonna be talking about, you know, going through the settings in um, these Mustangs. We're just gonna go through all the settings, see what they are. I don't think there's really a whole lot of videos out there of these Mustangs of somebody going through the settings and, you know, talking about them. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I do have the 401A package, so maybe the, this digital dash might have a few different settings in it if you don't have the uh, digital dash. Um, but that's all we're gonna do uh, is just walk through that. Um, so leave a comment on stuff you'd like to see on this channel. So let me know. Uh, to start off, I do have the six speed. Uh, I did not want the 10 speed because my intentions is to put this in the garage and make it a weekend car soon. Um, so I want something that was engaging to drive on the weekends. Uh, but other than that, let's move forward to like, you know, the radio and then we'll move on to the digital dash and those settings. Um, so if you have a premium or you have the upgraded radio in the base GT, you'll obviously have all these switches um, if you have the active valve exhaust, when you change your mode, the exhaust will change as well. I have the active valve. You have your steering, traction control, hazards. Um, and then with the premium, you get the cooling and heated seats, unless you get the Recaros. Uh, I did not want the Recaros because I wanted the heated seats and the cooling seats. So um, I didn't want the Recaros. And honestly, these seats, they, they hug you pretty good that I don't think, unless you're actually racing your car all the time or you just wanted a cooler looking seat, I wouldn't think that you would actually need um, the Recaros. Uh, but anyways, let's go through these settings. So home screen, that's this. You got your map, you got your radio, your phone, your heated steering wheel is right there. Uh, audio, radio, sources. You got your Bluetooth, Sirius, Sirius XM, AM. Um, you got all your presets down here. One thing I don't like about these presets is when you're on the steering wheel and you change it, it doesn't it doesn't like scroll through these like this. So if if your presets are on this and you hit the uh, next button on the steering wheel, it's just going to go through these. It's not going to scroll to the next. So like you can listen through these, you can listen to these, but if you want these, then you're going to have to uh, scroll and then you can hit this and go to the next thing um, and then you got your climate which I don't see a need to ever really get in here um, because like I like I said before your heated steering wheel is right here on the home screen your heated seats your cooling seats and then all your air components are here the only thing that is not down here to adjust is you know if you want it at your feet or uh, towards your face or and your I mean you got your defrosters here you got auto I don't understand how people don't use auto all the time because you don't I mean you set it to 72 degrees and that's what it's going to be at um, you know that's just me I don't ever mess with like fan speed or anything I just keep it on auto all the time um, there's that uh and then you go to your phone and you go to your contacts. And actually this is my first time seeing this. So I'm gonna see if my contacts are in there. They are, my contacts are in there. Um, change phone, you got your Siri, text messages. Okay, I'm not sure if yeah, I don't think iPhone really works that well with this, but you got your phone keypad, you can call somebody, do not disturb, recent calls, um, and then you got your navigation. Obviously, this has CarPlay, so the majority of people are either going to use Android Auto or CarPlay. This navigation actually doesn't work that bad. It just doesn't run as smooth as Apple Maps or Waze or Google Maps or whatever you like to use. Um, and then apps, Sirius XM Travel Link, not really sure what that is. Mobile apps, I believe that's just CarPlay. And then here are the settings. You got your sound, 
treble, mid-range, bass, balance. That's all your stereo system sounds. Your radio. It'll let you know, you know, what the song is or artist. Clock. You can change that. Have it set to automatic, obviously. So you don't have to mess with it. Um, navigation settings. You can set your map preferences, whether you want to avoid tolls or uh, things like that. But, you know, most people are going to use that CarPlay. Uh, Bluetooth. Add your devices. Mobile apps. Still not 100% sure what that is. I believe that's just for CarPlay. Um, your phone. Sync your contacts. And then your general, this is where you'll go to change your units, you know, if you want miles or kilometers and things like that. 911 assist, there's Apple CarPlay. I don't know whose phone this is, so I'm going to delete that. It must have been one of the Ford tech guys. Um, Wi-Fi, I actually, when I ordered this car, I believe this car does not have Wi-Fi. Um, available because there's that chip shortage um, they asked if I wanted to wait on it or not and I was like you know phones have hotspots you don't need it uh, so don't have Wi-Fi in the car vehicle I believe this is where yeah so you can change that uh, not a whole lot of vehicle settings in there I think most of them are going to be in the dash automatic updates this does update periodically I haven't had an update yet that I've noticed um, display you can turn your display off that's nice for when you're driving at night um, it does not turn the radio off or anything like that background this is where Ford kind of disappointed me because there's only four options for a background I have red seats these are all blue um, so I wish they would have gave a little bit more color options for that. I mean, you can change the color of this, the lights underneath the dash. You can change the color of the cup holder lights, but you can't change the color of the Sync 3 radio. That's a flaw in the design, I think, um, but that's just me. And then you got your Ford Pass Connect. That's just what connects to your phone to let you know your oil life and how much fuel is left in the car, tire pressure, things like that. And you can lock and unlock your car with your phone voice control the cars Siri ballet mode um, you can enter a pin so nobody can really mess with your screen unless they have your pin uh, and that's actually pretty cool because you can use your your spare key fob and down here in the cup holder you lift this out you put your key down in there and you can set this to certain speed limits um, so like let's say somebody can't go over 70 miles an hour um, just to you know keep your car safe from getting ruined if somebody's borrowing your car or you rent your car out or something um so that's i mean that's all the settings in there there's not a whole lot my mach -E, you know i had that big screen there's a lot more settings to go through but that's it on that one so we can go ahead and go through here obviously cruise control radio controls this controls your menu and then you have a couple different spots this is We'll go through the, uh, so you can enter your navigation through here and you can pick your destinations. Um, you can pick up phone, hang up phone. You have different settings and then you can pick your music right here. That's actually kind of handy. I use this a lot to switch instead of trying to get into the radio and mess with that. But we'll start with this uh, My Pony app. So we'll start up top, My Mode. That's just where you can mess with your settings. So like, it's in sport mode, track, launch control off. Um, it's got the normal gauges and I'm actually gonna save that because right now I have my mode set to the sport gauges, but I actually prefer the, the look of the, the uh, normal mode. Um, so you just hold this down and it saves it. And then you just back out of that. And then when you switch it to, it's right there, there's normal mode. Switch it to my mode.
and it keeps the same gauges, but it opened up the uh, exhaust. It's a lot easier than going into the settings every time to mess with your exhaust. But, um, so that's my mode. You can choose your cluster. Exhaust mode, track, sport, quiet. These are your track apps. So you have your 0 to 30, 0 to 60, 0 to 100, eighth of a mile, quarter of a mile, and then it saves your results. Uh, you got your brake performance, so 60 to 0, 100 to 0. You got line lock, so this will lock the front brake so you can do a burnout. Uh, I have not tried it. I don't plan on trying it. Tires are expensive. Um, lap timer, so you turn this on and uh, I'm not really sure how this one works. So you press OK and then I guess, uh, so you press OK again when you finish your lap and that saves the time. Um, and then you just hold that down to exit. Exit the track apps. And we'll go back into it. Start option automatic. Drag race countdown. Race track countdown. So you so you can have different countdowns for when you're about to race. Um, it'll count down for you. It'll either show some dots like a drag race or a, a timer. Performance shift indicator. You can set your shift point. Mine set mine set to 6,800 RPMs. I know these cars redline at 7,400 RPMs, but I really try not to redline it all the time. Uh, shift tone, so it'll beep at you. I have that turned on, it'll beep at you when uh, you need to shift. Your shift light mode, drag mode, that's what I have on. And the whole dash will flash orange uh, when it's time to shift. Track mode, uh, I believe track mode it has the dots like you see people with those steering wheels that have the dots up here that go green yellow and then red that's what it does in the dash and then tachometer mode just turns the uh it turns the uh rpms orange when it's ready to shift so i like drag because it flashes the whole screen orange you never have to look down um i don't really need it now that i've had the car for a couple months uh, but it's still nice to have on there launch control I haven't tried it yet. I kind of tried it. You can set your RPMs, 3,500 RPMs. So you turn that on, you push the clutch all the way down, and then you push the gas pedal all the way down, and it'll rev up to that 3,500 RPMs, and all you do is pop the clutch, and you go. Rev match, I keep that on. I mean, you can drive it without it, but to be honest, it's, it's nice. It's a luxury to have. You know, driving this every day, it, it just helps out a lot, especially in traffic. Gauges, this is where you can go to configure what gauges um, you want to pop up here in the middle. My color, you can just customize your colors. That's the color of the dash and uh, the underglow under the dash. Uh, cluster appearance, this is, you can set this to be normal, sport, or track all the time. I have it set to change with the drive mode, so if I put it in track mode, it'll change. And that's all the modes in the pony mode. So let's go ahead and scroll through the middle. So if I press this up arrow, you have your uh, you have your G forces. You have your you have just more stats on like your engine and stuff. Um, and then I like to keep those in the middle. I feel like it just flows nice with the car. And then we can go ahead and go through these modes. Um, we can go through steering real quick. Sport steering, comfort, normal. I like it in sport. Um, and then drive modes. So we're in my mode right now. Sport plus. Track. Drag. And in my mode, the only difference with my mode is I have that set to open the exhaust up in track mode. Um, I did, I didn't show this. So there's one more setting. So you can have quiet start. So I have it turned on. So between, I believe, yeah, between 9 p.m. and 9 a.m., my car will start with the valves closed. So it starts quiet and doesn't, you know, annoy the neighbors or anything. 
but that's it for the uh, pony button. So if we go into these settings, and that's where you click that, and this screen, this digital dash glitches out sometimes, like I can press OK, and it won't go. Um, but anyways, 20.7 average miles per gallon, um, tire pressure, and it looks like I need to balance my tires out a little bit. You can have a blank screen, trip one, 23.6, and that's actually, I reset that when I was driving home from Texas, so that's where I got, I actually got 26, but I've been driving this around town since I got back. And one thing I wish is I wish all this was with the gauges. So all you had to do is go up and you had everything there. But no, instead you either, if you want your trip, you have to go into here. If you want your gauges, you have to go into this one. And so I think that's kind of pointless. You have your driver assist, auto engine off. That's if your car is sitting there for X amount of time, it'll turn the car off. Um, blind spot alert, so my mirrors light up We'll have that little orange dot. Pre-collision assist, active braking, distance indication. Um, that's, it, it pops up every now and then when it thinks you're gonna hit somebody. Cross traffic alert, so if you're backing up and somebody's coming from the side, it'll let you know. Uh, cruise control, I have the adaptive on. That's handy, you don't really have to hit your brakes as much. Um, driver alert. Hill start assist so since I have a clutch it's kind of nice because it'll hold the brakes for you on a hill uh, so all you have to focus on is you know you don't have to worry about rolling back into somebody that's the uh, beepers when you're backing up lane keep system so with this being a manual this doesn't have the the lane centering uh, the lane keep more it, it just kind of bumps you back into the lane it's not as good as lane centering and I don't know why they didn't give it to manuals, but automatics have it. Wipers, um, I don't turn that on because I feel like courtesy wipe is pointless, especially when your window's dry. Um, but uh, I do have the rain sensing on. They'll turn on automatically. Speedometer, you can put it in kilometers per hour. Advanced settings, this is where you go for your, like your alarm your door, easy entry access. That's where the seat will automatically back up um, when you go to get in or out of the car. I turned it off because it kept messing up on me. So I'd go to get out of the car or get in the car and it wouldn't move my seat back into its driving position. Um, intelligent access, I believe that is where you can just put your hand on the handle and if the key fobs with you, it'll unlock. Uh, lighting, auto high beam, daytime lights, locks yeah you can set if you want the car to honk or um, that oil life I don't want to reset that windows remote open so you can use your key fob to open the windows you just press unlock twice and then hold it down on the second time my key this is where you can put your extra fob down in the cup holder and you can set um, you can set the speed settings and there's some other settings you can set like they can't put it in track mode or things like that. So I have my tac tachometer set to gears, um, but you can have it set to RPM or none. I just like being able to see what gear I am right there. I mean, obviously with me shifting, I know what gear I'm in, but it's just nice to see it. Um, measure units, see so here you can change your miles and gallons, kilometers and liters and uh, temperature Fahrenheit tire pressure PSI um, and I mean I believe that's all the settings in here there's not really a whole lot these do have auto wipers uh, but you can still turn them on um, your lane centering is right here so you can just click that and it pops up just let me know what you guys want to see but anyways that's it so i'll see you guys next time